Hi, Thomas Smedley here from T's Dog House. Thanks for joining us for this video. So in this video, we're going to take a dog and see how far we can get him towards being steady in one morning. So we've got a young pointer. He's been run on wild birds, but he doesn't have experience with pigeons. We did show him a pigeon, flapping pigeon, to make sure that he had a lot of interest in a bird. Um, and he does definitely get all excited about a pigeon in my hand. So that's the extent of what we've done with this dog, just to know that we could keep him around and he'd stay with us if we had birds. What we want to demonstrate is the power of the dog's desires and the importance of knowing ultimately what a dog's desire really is. And in this instance, with these pointing dogs, if, if a dog has good pointing instinct, we're going to demonstrate that the ultimate for that dog is to be on point. They will, they will learn to choose to be on point because that's ultimately their greatest thrill. So we're going to demonstrate that today as we work through this with this dog. We don't know how it's going to go because we haven't done it with this dog before. But it'll be real interesting to, to just see how far we get in one morning's time with this dog, trying to steady it up so it's watching birds fly away and staying on point. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the video. All right, so the, the dog is on his way. Here, here. Good boy. So this is Wally. Whoop, Wally. We can see that he's got some good excitement for the bird, which is definitely of importance at this stage. Now he's been run on wild birds extensively. He has seen a good number of wild birds and he has demonstrated that he wants to point them. Um, so he has gotten them pointed for short periods of time. So we know he has some point in him. But you can see he's definitely excited about wanting to catch this bird. So the first thing we got to do is see if we can get his feet stopped right there. So I'm watching when they, lots of movement creates lots of excitement. That'll create more chase when we stop. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Bounced off me. When we stop moving the bird, then that's when we're going to get his feet to stop. And as his feet to stop, as his feet stop moving, we're going to lower the bird. The big thing is we want his mind to start realizing when he's standing still, the bird will come down and stay in place. And when he moves, the bird will leave. Whoop! Whoop! Oh, that's a pretty long chase. Wally here! Whoop! Whoop! <laughs> Should have spoke to him sooner. Whoop! Wally here! Here he comes. Okay, we're going to check. He's been shot around, we've been told, but we haven't ever shot around him. So we're going to check that out a little. Whoop! 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 Yeah, we don't have a problem with the gun. <laughs> so. Oh! Wally here! Whoop, whoop. Good, that's really good. He's really wanting to get to point that. So that's the first place that we see 
that the dog really wants to be on point. You see him decide to stand still, just in those few repetitions showing him that if he stands still, I'll lower the bird. He's already asking me to lower the bird by standing still. So, you know, that's the first place we'll see that he, he ultimately wants to be right here. He wants to be on point. Oh, that was really good. Whoop! Wally here! Whoop, whoop. Wally well, here. Whoop, 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 whoop. So you can see he's already demonstrating just more desire to stand still knowing that that's going to get me to produce more birds. Whoop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Much better. That's the other thing he's showing us right there is that the bird in the hand is becoming more exciting than the bird in the air. You know, those first chases were quite long. I was a little worried about getting him back where we don't know him much, but that, that chase, he, he came off much quicker. You gotta get him desensitized to movement. I'm going to get a fresh bag. You stick this, open that up so I can stick this in real quick. Here, I'm going to hand you that. So now he's, he's obviously very hooked to birds. He's having a desire to point. Now I gotta just keep shortening that chase so that I can get his interest shifted to the next bird. Whoop, whoop. Whoop.
Wally here. Whoop, 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 whoop. And we have a lot of chase. <laughs> whoop, not bad though there. That was better. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. He's gonna need a break here in a second, so. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so I'm real happy with that. I had a bird fly. He decided to stay with the bird that was with me. Um, you can see that he's, he's definitely hooking up and knowing birds come from me. So we're gonna give him a little break for a minute, um, keep him from getting too hot this morning because it's quite warm already. Um, let him get some water and then we'll come back. Okay, so it was pointed out to me in our, while we were letting the dog take a break that I hadn't explained what whoop means. And you'll hear me whoop quite a bit. And whoop doesn't mean whoa. In the end, the dog will read it as stop moving your feet, but I'm using the sound to help him relate it to birds. And then with timing, I'm gonna turn that into a stop when I, when I make the sound. So that's what we're starting to work on here with him. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. 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 Whoop, 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 whoop. He does love the chase. Whoop.
Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Trying to use this time to let him enjoy the point because if they don't point, I mean, if they're mostly chasing, then they're going to love the chase. But as they start to get to point, they'll find more and more value in that as they do more of it. Plus, maybe it'll keep me from running out of dogs so fast. Um, you know, they get pretty tired running and chasing. I'm going to, you hand me the launcher. I'm gonna switch this bird for the pigeon on a pole for a launcher and we'll introduce him to that so he becomes accustomed to. So if you're not familiar, these launchers are just a metal box with a little catapult system in them that we can use to, to launch the bird so it can fly away, but it keeps it here with us until we launch it. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Thank you. Need to slow down a little bit. All that wild chasing. Whoop.
Whoop! Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop! 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 Whoop, 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 whoop! 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 Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop! Whoop! Whoop, 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 whoop! Wally, you have a lot of chase, buddy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh.
Whoop. Okay, that was really good. He, I'm gonna pick that spot to be able to take a break, let him get some water again, um, let him catch his breath. We don't wanna get him overheated and he's, he's getting pretty hot. But that time, mentally, when that bird went, he turned really close, came back to see if I had another bird. So mentally, he's, you know, I can see him starting to taper off of that point and realize, or that chase, and realize that if he sticks around, you know, there will be another bird. Okay, so we took a little break, um, got the dog in the pond, let him cool down in the water a little bit. Um, we're, that's going to be a challenge because it's a, it's a hot, muggy day. Fortunately, we do have some cloud cover, but it looks like that's breaking up too. So um, that's going to be one of the challenges that we're dealing with today is just trying to keep him from getting too hot. Hopefully, we'll get him to be chasing a little bit less here soon. And that'll help him too. But all right. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Ah, shoot.
So again, this is another example of a dog loving to be on point. You know, he's standing back. Shoot. Now we're having trouble with this one. He's standing back asking me to give him something to point, you know. Um, whoop! Whoop! We lost a little bit of, of his excitement for the trap because he had hit it those times and nothing was in it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Bop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. We out? I think so. Okay, we're out of birds, so we'll have to take a little break, catch some birds, let the dog have a rest, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so we've let the dog take a little break and um, you know cool down and relax. We had to wait for some pigeons to come back in. So we're up against a couple different things. The heat is making it challenging and it's just of course getting warmer as the day goes on. Um, our pigeons, as you can see, he's wanted to chase enough that, that it's we've used a lot of pigeons and and so our pigeon sources diminishing and we're hoping that they keep coming back in fast enough that we can keep going so we are up against up against it in those ways um, so that the dog has a lot of chase but I'm seeing more and more point and when he's on point I'm able to move around and do more with him on point what I would like to see is him be on point and allow a bird to leave and hook back up to me quickly that's getting shorter like if you were to watch you you couldn't see on the screen but but he was running a long ways in in the chase he was chasing for a long time before he's turning and coming back and i was having to holler to him to try to get his attention and to get him to come back um now he's he's running you know 30 40 50 yards is all and then he's cycling back in so that's getting shorter and from experience i know that there's a point when he's going to just stay hooked because he's going to realize that that chase just isn't doing as much for him as staying here and pointing and that's what we're looking for so some might say well we should put a check cord on him and stop him from chasing 
but what I really want to show with this, you see we have no e-collar, no check cords, no, I want to show what's going on in their mind because when they're in the wild birds, these kind of things happen, right? They go in and they point a covey of birds and, and one flies, especially if you're in, we call them the popcorn chicken, but in sharp tails or sage grouse or even rough grouse in the, you know, before the season starts um, when they're old enough to fly and, and, but they're young and not real smart yet. You know, those birds, some will fly and some will stay and that dog will come running back and it'll find that next bird and the next bird. And pretty soon when one flies, you'll see that dog. Well, sometimes it's not pretty soon, but that dog starts to focus on the site where the bird left from instead of running with the bird. That's the natural progression. If we just run strictly on wild birds, eventually these dogs are going to stop running so much and start focusing on the birds that are there and the chase starts to leave and the point comes until finally they're not chasing them across the hillside anymore they're pointing and they're waiting for the guns to get there and and that's what we want to that's what we're trying to to simulate in what we're doing here is those multiple flushes and getting that dog to connect to stay present with the birds rather than leaving with the flying birds and this dog he's shown that he has a lot of a lot of chase so I've got the bird in the launcher right here I'm gonna let him have that experience because he's been doing so much running I'd like him to think about this and he's getting tired I've seen this switch change in one hunt on dogs in wild birds because their feet got sore they got so tired that they just got tired of chasing and they decided they better start trying to figure out how to point. Um, so that's, that's the progression that we're trying to get through with him. You can see, you know, there's been a lot change in this dog as far as his desensitizing to my movement. Like I'm, I'm in front of him, I'm moving, he's allowing me to move, I'm flashing a bird and that got his attention. Whoop, 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 whoop. But there's a lot of desensitizing there and there's a lot that he's allowing me to do that I certainly couldn't do at the start when I had a hard time even getting him to point the bird, you know? And now he's... Now when he does get pointed, he's allowing a lot more to go on than him to, to break and... <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Cord from interfering with well, this strap will come and rub the shirt. You need to just clip it. Huh? You need to just clip it. Okay. Here, here. Whoop, whoop. Here, here. Okay, I'm going to change the way I clip. My cameraman is telling me that I'm interfering with my mic a lot. I need to launch her off there.
Yep. So as I was saying earlier, you know, you could take a check cord, and we could stop that chase, though that went away. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. That went away pretty quick, or his chase got pretty short. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. But the challenge with using the check cord is at any time, and I, I don't want to get caught wrong because sometimes I hear people talking as if I don't use check cords, I don't use e-collars, I don't woe break, I, but I do, I do woe break, I do use check cords, I do use e-collars, but the key is, is that we don't have to have them to get the dog's mind to the right place. And often, if we have caused the dog to do what we want him to do, we've made him do it, in the back of his mind, he still would like to do the other thing. He'd still like to chase, but he's not because we've restrained him from doing it or we've given him reason to be concerned about doing it. Um, and that always leaves a spot in that dog's mind where if they can, they're gonna get away with going and doing what they wanna do. So I would much rather take the time it takes to help this dog stop thinking chasing is wonderful and build more and more desire to stay pointed and let that happen, give the bird reps that we need to let that happen so that when he decides to do it, he thinks it's smart to do. And then if he already thinks it's smart to do and I've taught him what woe means, then, then we're gonna get to the end and, and both our minds are gonna be in the same place. I hope that makes sense, but I want him to say, you know what, I'm having more fun pointing than I am chasing. And right now he's still liking chasing enough, though not nearly like he did at the start, um, that he's leaving and he's not staying present. So that's why I don't just put a check cord on and stop him, is because if he has a reason to move his feet, I would rather help him decide he doesn't have a reason to move his feet through natural ways, rather than come in and force him to stop moving his feet, because I think that always leaves him with the idea that if he could, he would still like to move his feet, rather than saying, I'm not gonna move my feet because it doesn't, it doesn't result like I want it to. So hopefully that makes some sense. And I'll get some more birds in. We'll see what we can get done before we are out of birds, because we are mighty close to being out of birds. I remember this dog hadn't, I don't know that he'd ever pointed a pigeon in a launcher in his whole life. In fact, I'm pretty sure he hadn't before today. And I know he had seen a pigeon a little bit because we made sure that he had an interest in, a, in seeing a bird because that was necessary to do what we were trying to do. Um, but he certainly hadn't pointed to birds. I'm 
I'm sure he hadn't ever pointed a pigeon from scent or anything like that prior to today. Whoop. 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 Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, man. Whoop. Okay, so that was my last bird, unless there's more that have gone in the, in the pigeon pen. And I, I wished I had another bag because that's the fastest, getting that split there, that's the fastest he's turned around and come back. He, you know, he, he just hardly went at all, and then he was right back here, so. Unfortunately, I ran out of birds right then, but um, maybe maybe we can rest one more time and if some of those pigeons go back in, we'll keep trying and see what we can get done. So in that last clip, or when we ended the last session, um, we've gotten a few more birds, so we're gonna try a little bit more. Um, when we ended that last session, I finally saw the dog without going very far realizing that I had more to offer. Before, he was following the bird out there. Then he'd come back to see if I had something to offer. I feel his mind staying more present with me, so um, that's what we're looking for and, and what we're trying to shift, right? So that in his mind, he says, I'm gonna leave that bird behind. You know, I'm, I'm gonna let that one fly off because I think there might be some other reason to stay here and stay present. So we'll have him come back in here and we'll see if we can. Come here, Wally. Uh, so another thing that I'll point out, you guys can't see this. You don't see what's going on behind camera, but behind the camera is the pigeon loft. When we started out, he'd run down there because he knows from where he's at in his kennel where that loft is, and he'd run down and run around it. In fact, he ran around it so quickly, turned the corner and caught a young bird um, on the ground that didn't get up fast enough. So now there's birds on the ground down there, Tanner's flushing them and the dog is just standing and watching them fly back up on top of the coop. Um, so a huge change is what I'm saying in that dog. I wished we could, I don't have my phone on me. I wished, I wished you could see, you know, what's, what was going on there. Like that was a dog that was getting stuff pointed and standing way back off and letting Tanner walk in and flush some birds. And those birds were flying up on the loft in front of him and he still just catwalked and 
and pointed. So interesting things going on in the dog's mind and that's what we're trying to get in this video isn't getting control of the dog physically. I, again, I do do that. I do believe in that. But this is, this is getting the dog's brain in the right place so that it's easy to introduce the physical things we want because it makes sense to you anyway. It keeps the pressure and all those things very, very low. The style high. It gets us a much better um, product in the end, I feel like, when we help guide the mind to where we want it to be rather than just try to control the physical actions to get the physical actions we're looking for. These dogs will decide to, to, to make the decisions we hope they make. They'll learn to make those on their own, not because they're intimidated or worried about being in trouble, but because they know that's how they have success. That's how they gain the greatest reward for what they're doing. So he's pointed back there again. <laughs> it might take us a minute to get him on camera. Oh, whoop, whoop. I thought we flushed all the birds off, but now there's more landing on top of the coop. Oh, there was a couple underneath. Whoop. Wally, here. Whoop! Whoop! Wally! Whoop! Here we go. It's a lot more point, more style, like his tail's looking better. He's, he's really a, a very nice looking dog when he's pointed. So. Whoop! Whoop, 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 whoop! 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 Boy, oh, he does love those birds in the air. Whoop! 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 Whoop, 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 whoop. That pigeon pen is becoming a real challenge <laughs> with all the pigeons around it. Whoop! Did you see him on there? He wasn't into the camera frame yet? Not quite. So he he just came in and when that bird popped, he hit the brakes and then turned with it. So I saw that little brake check, which hasn't been happening. Mostly it's been a forward acceleration with that bird pop. That shows us too that his brain's changing a little bit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's what I wanted right there. You got him now? Whoop, whoop. Now he doesn't have scent, the wind's blowing to me, so he's just pointing the situation, the bird in my hand, and the fact that this launcher keeps going off. Whoop, 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 whoop. If that pigeon pen was a different direction, then we'd have the wind in our favor. <laughs> Whoop. Good. Whoop. So we're about out of birds again. Whoop. But what you're seeing is him pointing the situation. That's why he'll loosen up and move again. I'm gonna let him get in the scent cone.
So I don't know if you could see that all in the screen, but the dogs pointed and I just dropped a bird from some distance and he stayed connected. That's the first time he's done that. Can you see me? And there again, we had another bird flush while he stayed connected. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. But you can see that, that these dogs will start to decide to steady up They'll stop triggering from the flight of birds. They'll start desensitizing to our movement. Right? They start making a lot of choices to be more solid. And I, I, I can't, I have no ability through the collars or anything I've taught him verbally to ask him to stand there while I walk around. Right? I've done nothing to, those are his choices on his own to decide that he wants to stand and point while I'm moving or while I dropped a bird and it flew off. You know, that's him staying in the staying in the situation and staying connected to the bird on the ground. That's another demonstration that that bird that just flew off has decreased in value and its value is now lower than the bird that's on the ground. And that's what we're looking for until pretty soon the bird in the air's value is nothing and the bird on the ground's value is everything. And that's, you know, that's when we get dogs that want to be steady and hold them. Now when we start coming in and shooting birds for them, they can connect all those dots. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a future video. Now I'm going to fire my gun and then I'm going to, when he moves, I'm going to pop the bird. We won't be, have time to show that in this video to, to completion, but before long, he'll also stand still while the gun's firing because he's staying locked on what he's pointing. Um, and that's, you know, we can desensitize the sound of the gun, we can desensitize the flush of birds, we can desensitize to us moving around, all those things and just help him continue to shift his, his view of things until that pointing has the greatest value of everything. And that's when we'll have a dog that's very easy to work with as far as teaching it how, how we want to play the game. And it'll view the way we play the game as being successful and, and fulfilling their desires. And that's when you have truly honest bird dogs is when they believe that playing the game the way you're, you believe you should play the game is the way to the greatest rewards. So. So doing that a few more times, I mean, it might take a, a, a number of times, but you shoot the gun, they move their feet, the bird pops. That's building on the exact same sequence of events that we've been doing with the other things. And, and with that timing, pretty soon, that gun going off also won't trigger him, just like me walking around wasn't triggering him. And me dropping those birds from some distance didn't trigger him either. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you in another video.